Hello everyone and welcome to Architecture Books Flip Through series that I decided to make a long time ago and then forget about it so I'm doing it again now and for this one this is book 12 it's called The Visions of Heaven The Dome in European Architecture now this is a very simple let's say book to start with it's a jump start so I can move on with the project or what I plan to do in this series. So we're going to go easy and slow. The first one, uh, I'm going to start with this one. And it's a picture book. So basically it's more of like a lot of, um, you know, when you're going inside churches, Baroque churches and um, in Europe, like in Germany or I don't know, Italy. You look up and you're like, wow, that's a really nice dome. This book gathered a lot of these images and made it into one kind of picture book style um, edition. So this is 171 pages. It's by David Stevenson. So we're just going to flip through it and check. Um, let me see. and check the pages that are included in this book. So the contents are, he first does an introduction and he calls it admiration and awe. So we're just gonna highlight, you know, the contents, whoops, the contents here. And then I'm gonna choose each and we're just gonna, you know, you know when you highlight things in books, I'm trying to do something like this. So we have admiration and awe, and it's basically just, I think, his essay and an introduction to the book. The next one he divided into classical, Byzantine, Romanesque, Islamic, and Gothic architecture. The second one is the Renaissance. The third is the Baroque in Southern and Western Europe. And then we have the Baroque and Rococo in Central and Eastern Europe uh, here. And the 19th century is the fifth chapter. And the Dome in European Architecture by Victoria Hammond. I'm not sure what it is, so we'll go check it out. So, The Admiration and Awe by David Stevenson and the Photographic Sublime. Okay, so what we can do now, I'm not gonna read everything he's written, obviously, because this is something you enjoy when you're reading on your own so i'm just gonna highlight his tiny little um, snippets so nothing is more pleasant to the fancy than to enlarge itself by degrees its contemplation of the various proportion which its several subjects bear to each other when it compares the body of man to the bulk of the whole earth the earth to the circle it describes around the sun, that circle to the sphere of the fixed stars. Okay. Uh, anyway, like I said, this is a picture book. I'm not going to read the introduction, sorry. So, he started with the Pantheon in Rome. Now, this one is a really beautiful image. Usually, if you go to the Pantheon, uh, you go around it, not in the middle. So, to get the shot, very impressive um like if you ever go inside you you notice that the tourists they go around the dome and getting a shot from dead center is a bit difficult i would say so it's a really nice photo of the pantheon the next one is by battistero degli ortodossi it's in ravenna italy it's a really nice um dome painting what do you call it um it has a name i'm not sure i can't remember anyway the next one is also in ravenna italy is the apse in san vitale it's a really nice dome um this one is by Pentecost Dome San Marco in Venice. Okay, it's a mosaic. Let me see. San Cataldo, so it's a lot of 
beautiful. This one's in Ukraine. Now, Eastern European cathedrals are very underrated. I feel like a lot of people go to Italy, but if you really go to Eastern Europe and you check the Baroque churches there, it's, it's beyond amazing and it was one of my favorite um, places to go. So, let's see, we have in Istanbul, it's a bit more, not so, you know, with a lot of details, or a lot of paintings, more simple, I would say. We have Church of the Kora, or Chora, I'm not sure, it's in Istanbul. Next, also it's in the same church, I would say, a fresco, that's what I was looking for. The word I'm looking for is frescoes. Uh, this is mosaic. This one by Marmar Sinan, who's a very famous architect in Turkey. This is Suleymaniye Mosque in Istanbul. And this is a verse from the Quran right here. Um, let me see also here. Um, I'm not sure. I can't read that much. Anyway, moving on. Uh, by Mahmoud Ala, Sultan Ahmed Mosque. It's the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. There's another dome in Padua. It's a fresco. Really beautiful details. This one is in Parma, Italy. This one is in Milan. San Sipliciano. Very simple, but you know, when you, the more you look at it, you're like, wow, the details of how the bricks are very thin. It's really nice. Domo in Pisana, Italy. Okay. The Theater of the Assumption in Moscow. Moscow is one of my dream destinations. Can't wait to go to Moscow one day. Uh, this is the Trinity Monastery in Russia. Next is the Church of the Ascension, also in Moscow, Russia. Um, Basil's Cathedral, Red Square. Temple Church. Cathedral in England. It's just called Cathedral in E, like, okay, could be the Trillian Cathedral, I don't know, maybe. Temple Church, okay. Dome over Mihrab. Great mosque in Spain. You know, Islamic architectural domes, especially in the Andalus, was really, really something. I mean, really beautiful. Iglesia del Santo Sepulcro in Spain. This one is in, also in Spain, Salamanca. I'm not sure where is that. Cathedral Vieja. <laughs> Cathedral in Zamora, Spain. So like you see, it's a lot. It's a picture book, honestly. And I love picture books. You know, you get a lot of inspiration, especially if you want to design your own dome interior. I mean, they look very simple when you're looking at the exterior of it, which I think is very sad sometimes because I'm sure there is a way where you can showcase both interior and exterior. Um details of a dome this one is in granada seville spain it's another one um capilla condestable cathedral in spain okay next we have another dome interior let's see from in pavia italy this one is in this is the Madonna di Campania. Campana? I'm not sure. I can't read Italian. I'm sorry. Um, Santa Maria della Croce in Crema, Italy. Okay, so we're just going to go through them all. I mean, they're all beautiful. They're all, I mean, look at this. The fresco is just insane. Um, the details. I feel like when you go inside churches, you can just go, you can sit down and just stare at it for ages and you will 
be transported into like this nice realm, you know, aesthetic world where a lot of stories are being told. Uh, so let's go further. This one's a bit more simple. Mostly are in Italy. So I'm assuming he did an architectural excursion to Italy and took a lot of um, images. And they're all beautiful. They're all very well photographed because you can see it's like it's dead in the center. And it's a really good photo. Spain, Italy. Okay, this one's really nice. Also in Italy. This one, also in Italy. Okay, Turin. Okay. Uh, this one, I think it was his cover. Although there were more, um, more beautiful interiors, in my opinion, to be honest. I mean, this one could have been easily nicer for the cover. But it's not my book, so I can't say, I can't give my opinion that much, can I? Uh, this one's nice. So my suggestion or my um, advice would be, if you have this book, is to enjoy the images. I mean, they're all art pieces in their own right. And they're all really, really well crafted. The details are just insane. Although I do agree that if you want in real life and saw it, it's just a completely different experience and it was really nice that he made a kind of a picture book where he um, gathered a lot of these images so I'm gonna move faster oh see Poland I'm telling you every um, um, most of the churches that I went in Eastern Europe are very underrated I mean, these are really pretty and they're very well um, designed. Germany, also Germany. Germany has a lot of really nice um, Baroque architecture. Germany, Salzburg, Austria, a bit more simple. I think the only thing that you can't see in these photos is how three-dimensional they are so now you're just looking at them and they're very flat so you really not, you're not sure like how the distance between each element is but you can you can take a um I could, you know like guess I guess maybe I don't know if it's calculated guess because you can just assume how high it is I'm sure it's it's much more beautiful in real life for sure this one is in Innsbruck, in Austria, Weingarten in Germany, Weingarten, okay, Austria, wow, this is really pretty, okay. Now, when it comes to these, I didn't see them in real life, but I'm just wondering if they're really like an oblong kind of shape, or did he just have to... Uh, just to keep, because here I can see all the images are in the same ratio, so I'm not sure if he warped the image to make it fit his ratio. I mean, domes are usually circular or perfect circles. Maybe they're a dorm, I'm not sure, I can't say. I really have to Google that and have to do some research, but maybe next time. The frescoes in these domes are just immaculately um painted and they really really have their own you know beauty to it so i really love i love this book i love how simple it is and it gives um a lot of you know area for the reader or the viewer to just you know enjoy the aesthetics of these um dome interiors uh, this one is in Hungary. And then it's a synagogue, I think. Yeah. Well, that's it. He ended it with a synagogue. Interesting. Um, 
I don't know, but I feel like what would really be a good um, companion to this book is if he did something similar, but for Islamic architectural domes, because most of the buildings, yeah, most of the uh, architectural mosques have domes, and these domes have a lot of, um, you know, the same idea of, I mean, they're not as picturesque and fancy, maybe, I don't know, you really have to go check them. But that would be a very interesting, um, you know, book idea or picture book idea if he did the same thing for Islamic architecture. So that's pretty much it. I'm checking this is probably, yeah, another essay. And they quoted Dante. The nature of the universe which stilleth the center and moveth all the rest around and stuff begin as from its starting point and the seven hath no other word than the divine mind okay and that's pretty much it so if you guys had a chance to see this book in its paperback format uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it this is what I'm gonna do for the next few videos where I'm just gonna I have a lot of books in architecture and I'm just gonna flip through them and probably say a few of my thoughts and uh, it should be fun it should be a lot of fun there's a lot of books there that are very underrated and I think they all deserve their own um, place in the internet where someone is just you know looking at them and reviewing them and flipping through them so this was it for this video my favorite i would say uh da -da 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 -da. probably this one definitely this one and the one that was in uh what was it this one also in spain this was really because i'm assuming these are the muqarnas shapes um these are islamic architectural features which is basically if you have a geometry um, pattern islamic pattern geometries and they went further from 2d to 3d and they just came up with this beautiful architectural element so i think these are the muqarnasas and they're just beautiful insanely insanely beautiful <laughs> well designed i'd say Anyway, so yeah, that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I guess I'll see you for the next video.